Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about a new domain and getting up to speed on a really short deadline. So let's get into it. So the question in question was, Hi Frederick, I have just moved to a totally new project within the company with a totally different domain. I have 10 years of IT experience. I deliberately made this change in order to learn new things and be more relevant in the market. My previous product was in Java 6 and Java EE. The new product is using Java 8 and Rx Java extensively. As the domain is totally new to me and I don't have any experience in working with Java 8 or Rx Java, I wanted to know what, sh what my approach should be considering that the new team is expecting me to be productive in 10 days. They know my background but still because of resource crunch and a lot of work they have these expectations. Well that's fun for them. Not so fun for you but it's fun for them. And I would say that had I been you I would have just kind of ignored the deadline. Or the, if if there even is a deadline, if you, they say that they need you productive in ten days, my first question would be, if you need someone that desperately and and resources are that tight, did you feel that it might have been a good idea to raise this issue before you needed it in ten days? I'm just curious here because uh, usually whenever me and my coworkers feel that shit, we have too much work coming up. What are we gonna do? We're usually a, a, like before the time frame by at least a few weeks. In many ca most cases, a few months if we need to hire somebody. But you are where you are, and I would say that I would suggest to you that you go about this the exact same way as if the deadline or this weird 10 day limit wasn't there. Because at the end of the day, what does productive mean? The only people who know what productive mean in 10 days is going to be the people who are setting the expectations. So what I like to say uh, to developers who feel a lot of anxiety and stress over these sorts of things is that in every single contract between you and the employer or in this case you and the team there's going to be two factors to consider there's going to be what you can control yourself and it's going to, there's going to be what the team or the stakeholder can control now if the stakeholder tells you that i'm desperate i need you I need you to be productive in 10 days and you can't do it that's their problem because if they can i mean if you are if you have 10 years of work experience well and you haven't worked with this thing before and you have been transparent about that fact they, they have no business telling you that they need this done in like they need this in 10 days because then they can go and find a developer who's going to be amazing on day one then 10 days holy fucking shit depending on how you define that that's impossible if you they're ta if if the definition because that's what it is it's devil the devil's in the details if their definition is you should be completely self reliant now and know the domain there's no way that you can do that in 10 days depending on the size of the project of course i mean i have senior coworkers who have 20 25 some of them 30 years of experience and they are not comfortable in their role for the first f several months. Like they can code, but like you, you don't see them strutting around like they know everything because they don't. It takes time to learn an, a, a large system. It's that simple. So that's that's something you should remember because I've had other developers who've had this anxiety about pressure and things like that. And I keep on telling you, that's the part that you can't control. You cannot control what people expect of you. If they're stupid or have unreasonable expectations, there's nothing you can do about it. You can be transparent about it. I mean, if I tell you today, I want you to uh, read up on the uh, like a new tool or something like that that you never did anything with, and it's a complicated feature system, and you have 30 minutes because I need it because I have this important thing going on. Is that your fault? Like, are you gonna feel bad because I created a situation for you where you could, you cannot possibly win? It's the problem with spec, spec with dealing with non like non technical stakeholders, where if it's a really stupid stakeholder, you have no way of making them happy, because they're too dumb to understand what they're asking for. They're they 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 think it's easier than it is. They think that they are asking you to build a shed 
when they're actually asking you to build a skyscraper. And this is not a problem just in our industry, it's a problem in practically any expert field where you have people who have no idea what they're talking about, but they they don't know any better, so what you can't blame them per se. You can educate them, that's what you can do. The other part is what you control. And what you can do is to do the thing that I suggest every single single developer who goes to any project anywhere starts doing immediately, first day, immediately. Start off by looking into, do you have any coworkers? Do you have any domain experts? Like find anybody at all that knows stuff about the system and get an introduction. Because if you can get an introduction, it will save you so much time in comparison to reverse engineering the whole code base. Because if you have a lot, lot of code, and especially if you have like multiple systems or something like that, it takes a long time to figure out how all these features work. In some cases, you won't even be able to figure out how they are supposed to work or why they work the way they do. So just it's like being a detective in many ways. You have to like look for clues and then just figure out how everything goes goes together right. Since you have a team, go and talk to them. In the first day, they 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 should even if you have ten years of experience be. Uh, you know, there's a startup period for everybody, and no, anybody who has any like half a brain will know that that is, there is a period, an onboarding period. It's different lengths depending on your expectation and the seniority of the developer, but there's always an onboarding period. So start doing that immediately. Once you have got an introduction to the overall system, you kind of know how the domain fits together. You now need to take a look at the tools that you are unfamiliar with. Go and look at Arcs Java. Go and learn about the. Go to the tutorials. Go and study. Make sure that you're studying hard, because this is a major. If this is a major piece of technology that is part of the stack, you need to know it. The second part that you should do once you have your bearings on the basics, because this is something that always is that you should always factor in as well. How is the team using? RxJava. What patterns are they following? Do they have their own like weird wrapper on top, or like have they done something weird? Because I've been in many projects where we're using something, but we've they like the, some other developer had a genius idea and added on top of that thing like a a another pattern which makes it really hard to just search for solutions or find things on Stack Overflow because they have their own homemade made thing and you need to understand how that homemade thing works in order to be productive you because you can't be self-reliant in that area in that case because they've basically created a situation where there's no documentation even though there's documentation for the base version of the thing that they're using so and I can I can tell you right now Arcs Java and like reactive programming there is a lot of wiggle room for what is considered best practices in that area especially the same thing is in functional programming so go and see if you can find examples in the code that's the last part as well apart from talking to the how the team about how they follow these different practices have a look at examples like look through the source code make sure that you're looking over good areas like especially the main features figure out what they those are and take a look at them how do they work what databases are they using what like what practices and so forth that's usually that that is probably your absolute best bet overall that, that is what I would recommend. So what I want you to take away from this is that if somebody tells you that you have 10 days to learn something, ignore the 10 days because the thing is, you might feel the sensation that you need to impress somebody. You don't, actually. The thing that you have to do is to meet the expectations enough so that the person who set the expectation doesn't feel like it's worth firing you or getting rid of you or like they can get they can or that there's some better way for them to solve the problem that's the thing everybody wants to impress their new team or they want to impress their new senior coworker or like their new job or whatever but at the end of the day if unless you f are able to impress somebody and you start feeling a little bit anxious remember that you don't have to be the new gold like the golden boy or the golden girl that comes in and just saves everybody you need to produce enough progress and enough value to buy yourself more time to get really good at the thing that's what you need to do and that's how it works when you're learning something something new unless you are very gifted because that's a very individual thing and you can like super impress people just make sure that you're actually doing the making the right moves on the part that you have control over because you can't control the expectations i have been in a situation where my coworker from sales had come in and said frederick there's a bug in the system and i have a, i have a meeting in 20 minutes i need you to fix it and i just looked at him and i said 
I'm not going to be able to fix it in 20 minutes, but I'll take a look at it. And he goes, and he kind of freaks out and goes, you don't know why I need you to fix it. And I go, yeah, that sucks to be you. It sounds like a you problem. You should have come to me two hours ago or a day before. And I've told you before, if you want me to fix something, you need to give me the time to actually do it. You can't just come 20 minutes before you needed the thing done and then expect me to fix it. This is on you. So now let's you and me talk about workarounds, ways we can solve this problem. And then the next time you come to me in good time so that I have some time to actually think and do my job. Have a great day.